In this video, we're gonna take a look at a blue ink by Sailor, a name I'm not able to pronounce, Niori Samir. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to all of the blue inks in a playlist, so if you wanted to see more, you could check it out there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than a stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it brings some shading. Quick goes lighter to darker, brown goes darker to lighter. The is very dark compared to what's around it, where lazy goes dark to light. 10 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. There's some moments of some shading going on, like the Y looks a little lighter, brown looks like it goes darker to lighter. 17 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both don't really show color variation, but you really do see something here in the writing. And a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a cross bailey with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 17 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 24 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, and we're not getting it, and the smear test, you can't recover if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see very much a blue pushing its way all the way up, a slight purple tone as it's moving up. It gets darker blue at the top, and then an almost blackish line across the very top. Quite interesting. The one on the right, which is let dry for 10 minutes. Now that dark blue line you see at the bottom, and if you look right around the edges of it, you see that blackish tone. And I really do think there's a little bit of a something blackish in there. You see a light purple push its way up, and then this very light blue at the top. And it really does make me think that this is about four different dyes brought together to make this. I do think it has the potential of being permanent. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some spots of shading like the K in quick, the B in brown, the looks a bit lazier than the word over. 12 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show a little color variation, although I think it shows up better in the extra fine. And the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, uh, it kind of gets really woolly on the capital H. And there's a, it's just getting kind of a, a muddy from that yellow. I personally wouldn't use it in a note-taking situation, although I think your information is still there and protected, which is very good. Water is reactivating and lifting out some of the purple, really leaving that blue in place. Pen flush is doing everything that water is doing, and at the top you see a little bit of the white of the paper coming through. Now it only took water to get this out of my pen, and the one-third bleach solution kills it, but you're not going to need this to get that out of your pen. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. This is done not so much to see a performance change, but to see color change that could happen in that professional setting. 
Now this which is much more blue, when we come over onto the yellow, it only goes through a slight tone change. It becomes really a much lighter blue. It, and I say much lighter as in it just gets lighter in each case. It holds very well. It shows that it is, for the most part, very opaque. I think this would be very safe to use in a professional environment. This shows, you know, the smear test shows the most of the color change where it goes from very blue to a little purple leaning, which is interesting. This looks like a slightly purple leaning blue in the medium. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Sailors, Niori Samiri, I know I'm killing the name, has a viscosity of 2.88, making it on the higher side of normal, but still normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity and all that's done, there's a link to that video in the description. Let's take a look at Life Paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 10 seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 17 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both do show a tiny bit of color variation, but it's really not coming through in the writing. And a smear test, there's a strong chance you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Sailors, Niori Samiri has an average dry time of 16 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on Franklin Christoph paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Medium is dark, just a little bit lighter than the stub, but certainly darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we don't get any in the smear test. You could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like sailors, Niori Samiri, God, I know I'm killing the name, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with an orange ink by Diamine, something I can pronounce pretty easily, Blaze Orange. If you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to all those playlists so you can find those there. What do I think of Sailor's Niori Samori? A nice dark yet bright blue. It gives spots of shading that bring some real character. If I didn't have so many blue bottles of ink, I would jump for this. It will go on my future ink list though. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I really think a medium flow, medium or fine nib really put down its nicest tone. Just a little bit darker and with still having a few spots of shading, not tons of shading, spots, giving it just little bits of character, which really look nice here. I hope you got something out of this video. And in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Mont Blanc's Permanent Black.